Ken Kaneki, he asks, if I could have a single question, it would be how much will this combat evolve as compared to Rogue in Well... So if you watched my last video, you might have realized that there are a lot of people who actually think the same way about how deep work and style has changed thanks to the gigantic likes to views ratio and the comments to views ratio, which thanks for all the support on the last video. But I realized that on the last video, I kind of just like talked for eight minutes about some like completely random things, like insignificant things. So I, I asked some people in the comments and I asked some people from the Antediluvian Discord you know, what are some more specific, you know, bigger problems that, you know, affect how the game looks and, you know, why. So, in this video, that's what I'll be talking about. So, the first thing is Deep Woken's design and update philosophy. Now, I'm someone who stands by the saying of show and don't tell in video games. <clears throat> how do we know most of the lore in Deep Woken? Well, it's reading. You you sit and read. You you read books. It, the world doesn't really tell you anything. If realistically, if there wasn't the books and the developers telling us half the law randomly in the Discord, if you went around the world of Deep Woken, you to be honest, it's just it's a game with islands. You know, it there's it doesn't really show you anything apart from you know NPC dialogues and stuff. But that's still reading. The game doesn't show. It doesn't show, it just it just tells you now. I remember in Rogue Updates, they just wouldn't tell you shit. They would just say, you know, this is here, go find it. But in Updates, every you know, you've got Punchy and Agamatsu, you know, sitting there on Fridays with their fingers on the trigger for that upload button because they're testers and they have access to everything before it drops. And then, you know, it doesn't even matter any because they tell you everything in Updates anyway. There's no mystery, there's no exploration, there's no finding anything. You know, I remember, you know, two, three years after Rogue Lineage was released, they were still finding new stuff. You know, new new things would come out about, like, how things worked. And I remember I returned to Rogue Lineage for a couple days, a couple months ago, you know, and people discovered new shit. So... Another thing I should have gotten onto about in my last video is the particles and the vision obstruction for a game that's parry based and reaction based you would be surprised at how much shit there is to just obstructs all vision so some things i'm just going to name off the top of my head there's way more is the dawnwalker vfx if you if you get like a either fully whited out outfit where you become the sun or you have a fully black outfit where you just become this black void either of them obscures your animations and then you use Dawnwalker, the Dawnwalker like Super Saiyan effects, Emperor Flame, Shade Wisp, you know, just things like that that are just purpose. And also the the Shadow Talent, the, the shit that just makes your screen black. Why is that? Why is that even a thing? Even Archmage, I was I'll get more about what Archmage said yesterday after my video dropped. Um, but even he says and agrees that particles are too much and so he said the particles are going to be tuned down they're going to be taken away because mantras and stuff back in testing deep working seemed like they were they were for one a lot harder to get and second they seemed like things that assist you in combat they weren't the main the main dealer of all your damage they they seemed like you know short little mix-ups to catch your opponent off guard you know they weren't they weren't there to create these fucking ex explosions and shit the game feels more something like a MOBA or you know something along those lines where just there's just like a bunch of shit going on and you just have to try and figure out what's going on another thing is permadeath permadeath seems like it was just kind of slapped into deep Woken, and the deaths don't feel satisfying at all you can't even call the game a roguelike it's practically just like an MMORPG with with permadeath slapped in there deaths don't feel satisfying at all because the game is now so easy and so watered down and dumbed down that the deaths just, they feel stupid. Most of the time my deaths are from lag, disconnections, bugs, cheeses, you know, just, like, just stuff like that. So deaths just feel unsatisfying and it's more like something a chore rather than, 
you know, it's something that you learn from. Unless you're like a new player a couple hours in, then I guess you're, you know, I died to that Shaco, that's my fault. But deaths, they just, they, they don't serve any purpose anymore. The next thing is focus being taken away from overworld. You know, in testing Deep Woken, they said, you know, how players will will influence the real game. Players will influence the world and they'll change the world on things that they do. No, no, you, you're, you're nothing. In old Deep Woken, they advertised the game so that you would take part in the world. You know, and this was even seen in things such as the building style. Everything was a lot smaller and made you seem bigger. Like the, the buildings were smaller, just like everything was a little, was like smaller in scale. Now everything is just so big, you feel more like a spectator of the world. The only thing like close to being able to affect what happens in the world is rep. And rep is just a meter that goes up or down depending on which NPC that you grip. Also with focus being taken away from overworld is conquest being added instead of world events. Look at how many votes world events had here versus conquest and tell me which one do you think the developers wanted to add first. Yeah, they, they added conquest. Conquest is pretty much confirmed to be a League of Legends rip. You're meant to, first of all, you don't go in with any existing characters. So you, you're meant to kind of go in with a fresh slate and you buy talents or it, you could go in with a new character i don't know i haven't played conquest but you go in there and you buy talents you fight mobs and then you destroy towers and that sounds a lot like another game that already exists and this is just more shit to just take you away from the overworld because the overworld is already just so fucked you've got chime of conflict conquest now and battle royale Especially Chime. Chime is such a huge problem that deserves like its own video, but everyone already knows what's wrong with Chime anyway. There's no, there's no point me just talking about for another 10 minutes on why Chime is bad. Another thing wrong with the overworld is that in the Deep Work and Direct and the video that Agamasu uploaded the mission on Fort Merit, there was nothing like that. You know, there's there's no missions or anything cool you can go on. There's no expeditions or any 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 cool shit like that. Closest thing is Fort Merit is a one to two minute job you go in there the enemies are neutral so they don't even attack you the first time you go in there you take a hostage out and you just drop them off right by the boats making things more instant so i get that this is quality of life but it still takes away from the overworld things like duke layer 2 ferryman just makes the world feel more empty than it does already the accessibility of enchants makes everything so flashy, everyone looks like a walking glow stick, and there's nothing rare in the game anymore, there's nothing cool. I remember when, you know, the first month or two of Deep Broken, the Crypt Blade as a weapon was so rare that it was a myth. You know, and people in my friend group would talk about the Crypt Blade, and we didn't even know if it was real, because we'd never seen one, and we'd seen like maybe one screenshot of it. It's shit like that just doesn't exist anymore, It's everything is so easy to get. And Chime Elo takes away the focus of the game, away from exploration and more into the min-maxing or metamancing. Of course, like, there's always been metamancing before, but ever since that Chime came out, Chime Elo came out, it makes build making a lot more toxic, makes the community a lot more toxic, and just makes the game, you see the same copy-paste builds over and over and over again. Credit to Quicken for dropping these suggestions by. Another thing that I mentioned in my last video but didn't really go too detailed into is how the mantras are changing. I know I mentioned how a lot of the mantras that are being added nowadays kind of look like they're from like a Roblox anime game or some kind of other Chinese gacha game which I mentioned like something like Genshin Impact. So if you just look at this clip here, things like Flaming Scourge and everyone looks like a walking glow stick. Ever since they made Enchants more like ever since they made enchants free to get, is that everyone just looks like a fucking glow stick. What can we do or what is going to be done? I already put the screenshot of Arch saying that they're gonna tune down the effects. And yesterday he also said, which is quite promising, he did say that they might release an older version of the game or, or let us access it. Which I feel like if it dropped, then we would play it for a bit and realize, you know, this game also has flaws, 
but you know just like deep working today but it would it would be really cool to experience all deep working i myself uh have dabbled in building on roblox studio before and i'll display one of the places that i built this is meant to be like some kind of underground sunken city or something but this is the kind of style that I feel like that I wanted to try recreate that I felt like deep working has lost over time you know if I saw this place I'm a little biased of course but if I saw this place yeah I'd, I'd want to explore if apart from Archmage saying that they're gonna tune some stuff down I doubt they're gonna do anything the devs have completely changed their minds and philosophy they they don't like how the old game looks anymore so some games that you can play or wait for. Law Game. Law Game is a game that's been out for a, a very long time. It's very good. I highly recommend it. It's one of my favorite games ever. It's a really good game. There's so much exploration and secrets. You know, it's got that clunky, rigid combat that the old Deep Working style look has. There's billions of secrets and there's multiple layers of the world to explore. Antediluvian, I already spoke about this game in my last video. You know, from the sneak peeks that we've been shown, it looks to be a very promising, dark, unforgiving game and inspired by the likes of things like Fear and Hunger and also Made in Abyss, which is what Deep Working was originally mostly inspired by. Just from the sneaks, it looks really promising and I'd highly recommend that you join the Discord down below to check it out. And the next game that I was also recommended that I've been seeing around is Linvale. Linvale also looks to be a lot more Souls-like, so I'll put up some screenshots here. It looks really promising, and I'll also put up the link to that in the description. Another game, X-Cry. X-Cry X -Cry also keeps that style, but it looks more combat-heavy, more PvP-focused. But I've also seen some PvE from the game, so that also looks really promising. Those are some games that you can play or wait for in general, whilst if you're missing that old style. And that should be it. I think this that's all I'm going to talk about on this topic. There shouldn't be a part three. I've covered a lot of things and you're free to discuss and argue in the comments like you did in the last video. Goodbye.